Hi, everybody. My name is Heather. I'm with Poets and Quants, and I'm very pleased to be here today with uh, Iowa's Tippy School of Business. We've got Jan Fassi, who's the Senior Director of Online Operations, and Chelsea Hillman, who's the Managing Director of the Online MBA. So uh, very excited to find out about the program. And I believe, I think, this is the first time that uh, Tippy has done an event with us. So I think you're right. we're very excited. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Um, so let me just go through the questions, starting with uh, Jan. So could you please just introduce the school to us, tell us about the mission, values, um, location, even though we don't always have on-campus events, right, um, and reputation. Wonderful. Well, thank you for having us. Um, and I think location might actually be a great place to start. The University of Iowa is in Iowa City, Iowa. And it has been in the uh, part-time MBA space since about the 1960s. We do have MBA courses that are offered in Cedar Rapids and Des Moines, Iowa and online. And Iowa launched a fully online path to an MBA degree in the fall of 2019. And that's really given us the ability to expand our reach. Currently, we have nearly 1,400 MBA students enrolled. Um, enrollment has nearly doubled since we launched our online path. Students reside in 43 of our 50 states, and we have roughly a 60-40 split among those living in Iowa and those who live outside the state. We also have students representing nearly a thousand different employers across the country, and about 600 of those are in Iowa. Um, a little bit about un the university's mission, kind of at a high level, it really is to teach, to research, and to serve. Um, and I can mention a couple of the strategic priorities within graduate management programs. Um, I think the two I'm gonna highlight will be educational excellence and a student or learner centric approach. And what I mean by educational excellence um, for us, it is really important that we're creating high quality programs, experiences and outcomes for our students. Um, a couple examples, the same faculty that teach in our in-person MBA program are the same faculty that have been developing and delivering our online MBA courses. Uh, our online courses spend about six months in development, and they really are designed in a partnership between that content expert, the faculty member, and also with an instructional design and media team who bring online learning expertise to that development process. And when I talk about a student-centric approach um, within our programs, we have an entire team that is dedicated to the student experience once a student is admitted to our program. We really do value the voice of the student and we gather feedback along the way um, at multiple touch points and that does influence our program. And while we're rigorous and competitive, we do have students tell us that it doesn't feel cutthroat. Um, and I guess lastly, uh, you know, another fair characterization of our graduate management culture is we really have an experimental mindset. We have a culture where it's okay to try things and it's okay if they don't always work out, um, but we're taking a risk and we're definitely not afraid of change. We, and we have definitely had our share of change over the last few years. Chelsea, would you like to speak to reputation just for a bit? Yeah, thanks, Jan. Um, so I'll touch on reputation by sharing a few notable items that have put the University of Iowa and Tippy in the news recently. Everyone loves to hear about rankings and the US News and World Report um, just announced the Iowa MBA as the number 36 best part-time MBA program in the nation and number one in Iowa. Um, Princeton Review recently ranked our online MBA number seven best online program and number 14 overall. And our online path was launched in fall 2019. So we're really uh, very happy with such a strong early showing in the rankings. Um, at Tippy, we also have six academic departments. And recently, our business analytics department um, received the UPS Smith Prize, which recognizes the leading university in the world in excellence in preparing students to practice in the area um, of business analytics. And lastly, the University of Iowa was the first public university in the country to accept men and women on an equal basis in 1855. And more recently, we were named a national leader in gender equality in 2022 EO study and the Women's Power Gap study that was published in January um, ranked us as number four in the nation and number one in the Big Ten in the area of women's leadership and representation. In addition to President Barbara Wilson um, leading the University of Iowa, we are proud at Tippy to be female led by Dr. Amy Christoph Brown at the college level and Dr. Jennifer Blackhurst, our associate dean in graduate management programs. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Um, learned something today. 
a lot. Um, so to go on to the program a little bit, um, Jan, can you tell us about the class size and if there's any flexibility in the pacing of the program, how how a student would take it throughout the, the year or years? Absolutely. Um, this might be a good point to share just a little bit of history. Um, our part-time program is for working professionals. Our students typically are working full-time while they're pursuing that MBA degree. And with the launch of that fully online path, students can actually complete the MBA degree without ever setting foot in Iowa. Uh, we do have in-person courses and experience available. Some of our students, students still want that. And while that Fully online path is relatively new. Iowa has offered online MBA courses as early as 2007. Um, this spring, we merged our PMBA, our professional MBA program, with our online MBA program, and it is now considered the Iowa MBA. And that for students, it means they no longer have to choose at the point of admission whether they want to be an in-person MBA student or they, they would rather be an online student. So they have the flexibility to take courses uh, in either format. You asked about class size. So most of our courses have about 40 to 45 students and our program does consist of nine core courses and six elective courses. And in terms of additional flexibility, students have choice within the curriculum and I'll come back and explain what I mean by that. Um, they also have choice around pace and time to completion of their degree. They have that format flexibility I mentioned already where they can choose courses that are either online or in person, and they can also choose when to begin. Uh, so they can join the program at three different starting points, August to January or May. Um, so choice within the curriculum, let me explain what I mean about that. Um, students really can choose in what order to take the classes, so it's not a prescriptive path. And we now have about 40 graduate level electives available online for them to choose from. And in terms of pace and time to completion, students can really slow up or, uh, I'm sorry, speed up or slow down and even take some time away if they need from the program. Credits um, that they earn toward their degree with Iowa are also good for 10 years. So that's a relatively long time to give someone to complete the degree. Uh, most of our students take one course at a time, uh, do about five courses per year and complete the degree in about three years. Thank you. Um, so Chelsea, uh, Jan mentioned, you know, these electives, we've got the core, core curriculum and the electives. Are there specializations or concentrations that are sort of tracks for students that they can select? We do. So we offer um, certificates in leadership, business analytics, marketing, finance, and innovation with a few cross-functional certificates in the works in the future. And those were based on requests from students um, and also the skills that we hear employers are looking for in their future managers and decision makers. Um, we also have a master's in business analytics that um, is, we included a dual degree option. So students can earn both their MBA and their MSBA. Does that add time or is that just, is that a, a concurrent? So it can be concurrent. So students um, often will start with the MBA and then add the certificate concurrent. Um, and but with all these new courses that we have coming out and the 10 years that Jan, man, that Jan mentioned that students have to complete, we sometimes have students who will come back and actually finish a second certificate or a new certificate. Um, we also have some students who start in the certificate path and then decide to add on a degree as well. So it's really flexible. We have a lot of common coursework throughout our programs. So students are also able to change kind of midway through. So I may start in the MBA. I have a certificate. I've either discovered a new area of interest or maybe something's changed at work and my company is now valuing different skills. You can actually pivot that as well. So it's very flexible. Very flexible. Mm -hmm. So Chelsea, the same with you, um, what types of skills or backgrounds make a student successful in your program? Yeah, so the Iowa MBA is for working professionals. So they often are balancing business lives with their personal work and now they're adding school into the mix. So um, our average student has about eight years of work experience. Um, we have a minimum of 18 months of work experience required to be admitted into the program. Um, but a background in business is not required. You don't have to have an undergraduate degree in that area. In fact, um, about 40% of our students do, but 36% come from a STEM background and 25% come from the humanities. 
abilities. So I think what really requires students to be successful in our program is to bring that knowledge and experience to the classroom. Um, the majority of our classes have a required live Zoom session. So what you'll find is that students can bring those experiences and also learn from the experience and the diversity of their other classmates as well. So we really value that interaction you have not only with the faculty, but with other students um, as well. And so um, our program also is an eight week model, which gives students flexibility to decide when to take classes, when not to take classes and what classes to take. So, um, you know, we, we recommend that students budget 10 to 12 hours a week dedicated to coursework to fit in with their, their busy lives. Um, and most of our students are taking one course at a time with a three-year path. And so our program is that Jen, uh, Jane has already mentioned is very rigorous. So while previous quantitative coursework is not required, a working knowledge of college level mathematics, for example, statistics, algebra, and pre-calculus uh, pre is expected. But we do also have some review material available for students who are looking to brush up on some of those quantitative skills too. And I believe Jane has some tips to share on, on how to be successful as an online learner specifically. Sure. Um you know, a lot of times when people are returning to school to get a graduate degree, it's been a long time since they've been in the classroom. And many of our students are actually new to online learning as well. So we do try to prepare them for that and what's different. Uh, it's really important to make sure that students are able to create a dedicated space and limit distractions. Um, time management and self-motivation is just really important when you're in online graduate school. So if those are skills that you haven't had to uh, practice for a while, this would be a really good time to start sharpening them before you think about enrolling in the program. Uh, there's just less structure, right, of a traditional scheduled class. It's really up to the students to set that consistent and productive work pace. Um, online learners really are responsible for more of their learning on their own. So figuring out how to make time within that busy schedule to get that coursework completed and meet those deadlines just really is important. Um, I'd also say don't be afraid to ask for help, to ask questions, go to office hours, arrange to meet with your instructor, um, contribute thoughtfully to discussions. Uh, we do, Chelsea mentioned our online courses um, require live sessions in the online program and you know keeping that camera on and staying engaged for the two hours each week is really important. It gives students a chance to hear from their peers and also share their experience and expertise. And I, lastly, just having the right equipment, right? So that's just really important. And it's not hard to get set up um, to learn online, but having the right equipment makes a big difference. So equipment, space, dedicated space, taking advantage of all opportunities, right? Asking for help. So uh, Chelsea, back to you then. Um, so a lot of times MBAs are focused on the role of professional development or career path rather than the sort of soft skills or who they want to become as a person or a leader. Um, do you have any advice or insights about that part of the journey for prospective MBAs? Yes, we um, actually have a dedicated career services teams that works with our students, not only on job searches, but pivots, career management, the leadership development that you had just mentioned. And so there are experts on demand for one-on-one -on -one coaching, webinars on salary negotiation, and additional resources. So we reached out to them as the experts to also share advice from their team. Um, and they said, be intentional and purposeful. As a student, you decide to make an investment in yourself by pursuing an advanced degree. So really making sure that you take your professional development just as seriously. Um, so this includes connecting with peers, faculty and staff, regular LinkedIn engagement, to build your brand and expertise and identify trends and keep your resume up to date, um, not just for job seeking, but for professional associations and, and board positions. But most importantly, to work with our career team to devise a plan um, that is realistic and promotes growth. And so my other advice would be to start in day one. Don't wait until graduation to start investing in yourself and your career development and, and promotion and, and pivots. This is a unique opportunity for you to grow and um, expand your network and challenge yourself both in the classroom and out of the classroom by taking on new projects and assignments. So thinking of your um, in-class group work and assignments as a low risk environment for you to practice, learn and grow. And in my experience, it's a lot easier to make smaller career pivots during your MBA journey that add up to a big career move um, than it is to ignore your professional development, just focus on the coursework, and then um, expect to make this big jump afterwards. So it's really intentional in using this opportunity to help you practice those skills and then apply them at work and into your career um, advancement as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm just being reminded that we have 10 minutes left and we have a lot of questions, but I do want to ask um, whoever is, is um, 
um, who would be answer better. Um, you know, we focus a lot on networking for full-time MBAs. And so mm -hmm. you're online, you have the in-person classes, but how does Tippy replicate the networking? And can you talk a little bit about the alumni network for online uh, MBA students? Yes. So the majority of our events are actually offered online. So we invest in what we call the virtual campus. Um, and so with the merging of the programs and being in, the in person, all of our events are open to all of our students. And so we offer networking opportunities, um, career services, social events, um, professional development from our faculty, alumni and other experts, which is one way that we kind of engage and make connections with alumni as well. Um, we also have student groups that get together and, and do will tell us, give us feedback about what they'd like to see in their student experience but also um, they've coordinated student-led Hawkeye hours, which is what we call just a social event at five o'clock where everybody gets together mm -hmm. and we do some mix and mingles and those types of things. Um, and then a data storytelling recent professional development opportunity. So we um, are we kind of build all of our events in the virtual campus first, which then makes opportunity available to everyone. And then I think another kind of aspect to it is that it allows us to record the events. So then we put those in our resource site and we have a library of content for students. Um, so we're really working with students too with that career services connection for them to build relationships. So that way we hear from our students, it's a lot harder to do that in the online space than it is in person. So as a team, as a student experience team, we are working on those opportunities to give people to connect personally and also kind of um, strengthen those relationships that they are um, creating in the classroom as well. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have some live participants and I just wanted to remind the live participants that you can ask questions uh, for Jan and Chelsea uh, right here in the Q&A and we'll grab them and answer them. Um, so continuing um, on with Chelsea, in the global business landscape, cross-cultural communications become important for leaders. How does Tippy help to develop those kinds of leadership skills for uh, students as they go forward back into the, or in the working world? Great question. So I heard kind of three big topics. Um, there's the global business landscape, communication, and leadership skills. Um, so I'll start with the global aspect. Um, we do have a, in our curriculum, a global learning opportunities elective course, which is an immersive travel experience. So starts as an online class that goes over international business strategy, and then there is a travel component. So students actually get to be put into a situation where they are experiencing a culture different than theirs. Um, they are also um, visiting with businesses and learning what it's like to to do business um, in those areas as well. And so um, they also take a deeper dive and kind of really researching those areas and then hearing from the people who live there. Um, there's also a cultural component to the um, travel as well. And, and I've had the honor of accompanying um, trips to Berlin and Prague. And Jan, I believe you did the Dublin London tour as well. And so we have, um, in addition to European destinations, we visit the Middle East, Africa, China, South America, et cetera. And some upcoming trips are scheduled for Italy, Panama, and also um, Iceland. So some unique destinations there. Um, moving on to communication, the University of Iowa is known as the Writing University. We're the home of the Iowa Writers Workshop. Um, so we have graduates that have won virtually every literary award that there is. So if you are you know, interested, you can Google and find some really um, interest, uh, interesting alumni from that program. So at Tippy, we're the home of the Frank Communication Center, which works with our faculty and students to really integrate those communication skills into our coursework, our MBA core um, as well. But we also have a business communication elective that is always dynamic and changing. So the start of the pandemic, we added modules on virtual communication. Um, most recently, they added modules on data visualization and how important that is and being able to communicate and influence decision making. Um, and so we've also taken some of that business communication and incorporated those lectures into our business integration course, which is our capstone course, so that every student has a formal opportunity um, to, to brush up on those skills as well. And then um, touching on the last point of leadership skills, the leadership certificate is the most popular certificate that we offer. And we have a pretty robust um, leadership elective list with leadership and personal development, maximizing team performance, strategic management of change is some of our most popular electives. Um, but really, um, not only are students building those skills and strengthening our leadership skills through our coursework and group work, but many students are also highlight the ability to take what they're learning in those classes and those leadership classes or other classes and apply them at work the next day, working on projects, which we kind of talked a little bit about in the career question, but they see that as a major advantage is, is being able to make that change while they're in the journey and not waiting until the end. Wow. Uh, thank you. Uh, I feel like we could use an hour. <laughs> I really do. Um, so, so Jan, um, you have the fortune telling question. 
that we've been calling it. Um, so we are going to ask you to predict the future. What changes might uh, we see coming from Tippy over the next three to five years? Well, the next change that's up following the merger that I mentioned earlier, this fall, all of our courses will transition to eight weeks. Um, so that's a new change for us. Um, and we've been transitioning to that format slowly. Uh, I'd also say, I guess sometimes it's helpful to look backwards when we're thinking about future planning. And something I think we, I've heard everyone say over the last couple of years is we're just very glad that we moved into the online space prior to the pandemic because it really positioned us well to grow our online offering quickly and you know having a reliable and consistent in-house process for online course development has helped us to be more agile uh, it's led to a way to offer more convenience to those students who want that in-person course um, and a mechanism for looking at our courses regularly and keeping them fresh you know i have I have no doubt with the greater acceptance of online learning and the convenience that it offers for students that those factors are going to continue to drive the demand for online learning opportunities. And I think within higher education right now, there's a lot of discussion about supporting the lifetime learning journey and upskilling through perhaps less than a full degree or micro credentialing. And those are definitely areas that we're looking at and exploring. Thank you for that. It sounds like there's some key words that I've been sort of jotting down here as you've been talking and, and as I'm jotting, you're saying them, but overall I'm hearing, you know, the, the program is extremely flexible, but rigorous. Um, there's, um, you know, it's sort of adapted to be well, agile and um, interactive um, and robust, but also the ability to uh, concentrate. So um, how can our watchers connect with the school? Um, mm -hmm. Chelsea or Jan or admissions um, following this and for upcoming important dates. Yes. So Jan has a slide that she shared here that has the Tippy grad programs email. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them. If you'd like to get in touch with Jan and I in particular, um, they can connect us. So if you have any questions about anything we've shared here today, um, our Tippy website, it's T-I-P-P-I-E um, dot U-I-O dot E-D-U has an opportunity where you can book an appointment with a, an, a member of our team to talk one-on-one -on -one about what you're looking for and, and whether um, how this program could be a good fit for you. And then if you're ready to apply, apply and join us. We'd love to see you on our next Zoom session. Um, and the application is available at apply.tippy.uiowa.edu. Thank you. Enrolling admissions throughout the year? We should have three admissions periods. So uh, we have our summer application, I believe, is still open, closing soon. Fall and spring is also open as well. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for closing our day. Uh, for, for those of you who have been with us all day or who have watched the videos, um, we appreciate your time. I appreciate your time, uh, Jan and Chelsea. It's been wonderful to get to know more about Tippy from you directly. Um, anybody who is interested can also always reach out to us and we can put you in contact with the schools. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. We enjoyed being a part of this great event. <laughs> we enjoyed having you. So we hope to see you again <laughs> and often. Absolutely. All right. Bye. We'll be in touch soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.